Whoa, hey guys, welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back for part two of the first graffiti project that we are starting. I know the first two were called graffiti, but they were more wall murals. Well, now we're getting into the graffiti style lettering. If you saw video one, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're new to this channel, guys, welcome. And don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and become a part of my bloodshot army that I am growing here, guys. The airbrush wielding warriors. That could be you. I know you. I know you wanna. I know you wanna. <laughs> All right, guys. And with that being said, let's get right back into it. Let's start splashing some paint. Check. It out. All right, and we will start off with some real time for you guys. Uh, a little bit of a recap on the last video. We ended off with the whites. I had blocked in the letters with the green, blue that you see there. Different variations of both, and then started doing the border in white. Well, today, guys, I am going in with, uh, well, if you look at the cup of my airbrush, you will see it is a very light blue. And uh, you're probably barely even picking up what I'm putting down here, guys. Um, it's not much different. It's just a way for me to uh, tone back the harshness of the edge of this white. So I'm just kind of going to the edge of it, and I'm bringing a little bit of blue to either side. Just toning back, toning back that harshness I'm getting of the white on black. So I'm basically outlining the whole thing in this color. Um, and this is a good thing to note, guys. If you're doing graphics, lettering, or just graphic shapes, and you got two colors, and your one color is just like, ah, it's so harsh against the background. Dude, going a shade or two lighter, or a shade or two darker, will diffuse that color and help it sit nicer against your background without giving you such a harsh edge. Um, sometimes with uh, airbrushing, with doing hard edges, masking hard edges, you can wind up with a bit of a sticker sticker effect. Um, and uh, who, who likes it? <laughs> Nobody wants their artwork to look like it was a sticker slapped on quickly. They want people to know that there was some time spent so keep that in mind guys, just a little bit of a uh, shade or two lighter or darker around that edge will really blend it in and show that it is a little bit more than a sticker. Um, now I'm going in with uh, just some graffiti kicks for the blue border that I've outlined the entire thing in and uh, some highlights here and there. Just kicking in some uh, kind of cloud effects, you know, dust cloud, spray bomb cloud, I don't know, having some of them dripping with the puddle theme, and uh, always constantly, get out of my way, constantly moving guys, moving this piece so that it is easy to work around, um, I know I just yelled at myself for getting in the way of the camera, but there were a few times where I just kind of had to step in the way because there's no other way to get my brush in there. And keep that in mind, guys. Um, in a lot of cases, I am moving these parts around all over the place. Um, I'm not trying to overextend myself. I don't want to have it where I am feeling restrained and trying to put paint where it doesn't go. As you see, I've got a couple different levels I can play with. And... Just something that I've learned over the years, guys. Make sure that you move your part. Make sure you move your piece. Make sure you move your panel. If you're working on an easel, man, don't think that you gotta keep it straight up and down. Flipper, flipper over, flipper upside down, flipper sideways. You'll be surprised how easy it is to get some of these lines with your piece upside down as opposed to trying to overextend yourself. And with that, let's get into the uh, Piece de la resistance, my little overextension on this piece uh, was not asked of me, but I just thought it would make it so much better if we had a water effect at the bottom 
with a drip just kind of kicking on a little drop sitting on the surface like it's just about to break uh, that's the whole reference I was pointing at there a little while back so I went in with white to map it out, went in with a dark blue to kind of give it the color, and then I will go back in with highlights to really bring it into sing. But well, I have my dark blue in my brush, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and chisel out my favorite part, chiseling out, getting the real nice defined detail. I want to make sure that where these breaks are, where there's separation between these letters, that it is easily seen. Um, moving the piece again, guys. Making it easy for myself and harder for you guys to see. I know, keep stepping in the way and shoulders. and, But hey, I got to get this done. And as long as you can learn a little something in each video, yup. I agree, man. We are on par. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close here. I'm just pretty much going in with the last of my darks, getting some of that into the interior to add some cool effects to the lettering, and then I will punch my highlights, and uh, that'll be that. That will be that. What do you guys think at this point now that we're pretty close to wrapping this up? Is it easily legible, or are you seeing an F in there instead of an E, or what, what do you guys think? I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's pretty cool. Again, a little bit different. Not something I've done for numerous years. I haven't been asked, or even requested, or required, or even, how would you put that? Desire. I haven't, I haven't had the desire to graffiti much or anything in a few years. So, I enjoyed it, guys. It was a throwback to my childhood, to my misspent youth. And that will be as incriminating as I will get. <laughs> and you guys enjoy this. Please drop me a line if you have any questions. If there's anything that you think I missed and you're just like, I need to know a little more, hit me up guys. I am here for you. I am just punching the last of the highlights and, uh, and, uh, I'm gonna call that one, uh, super savory guys. Yup. Done like dinner. All right. Puddles. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha What do you guys think? That is a wrap. Puddles. I know it's hard to see with that glare, guys. Ah, that's a little bit better. BSA. <laughs> Alright. P U D D L E S. <laughs> Alright, guys. And that's it for me. I'm going to call this one. Done, and on to the next, guys. It's just a quick little one, nothing too spectacular. Um, all right, I'm going to file this guy away. I'm going to rip up the saddlebag next piece in this project. And they're all a little different, a little different in style, and a little different in process, guys. So you saw how we did this one. Check out the next one, guys. Lettering done a little different. Alright guys, and as always, like, follow, subscribe, thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. Alright guys, keep your eyes peeled for the fourth installment in the Graffiti Project, guys. And uh, hey, if you're a beginner, be sure to check out that series as well. Airbrushing tips for beginners. Big cheers from the Bloodshot Studio.